This is the SV Boney SV225 Mini Alt As Mount outside at an impromptu moon gazing event around the corner from my house. It was a smoky evening, but 19 people saw the moon that night. And here are a few images I've taken off the moon with my phone through the eyepiece. I've used the larger SV225 in about seven out of nine outreach events so far this year. So when SV Boney reached out and asked me if I want to test out their mini, the SV225 mini, I thought, why not? I really like this one, so maybe I'll like this one too. And I'll go over the differences between them and what I really think about this one in this video. Inside the box, you get the body of the SV225 mini, a set of hex bolts, a slow motion control knobs, clutch screws, and the manual. The mount actually ships with the base installed upside down, just like the original. So the first step is to flip it. I loosen the hex bolts, rotate the base and reattach it. Just like the original SV225, you can mount the base in different positions around the octagon, but I'm keeping it in the standard configuration. Next, I install it on a tripod using the 3 8 inch thread at the bottom. Then the clutch locks go in, one for the altitude, one for the azimuth. and the brackets are adjustable so you can pull and reposition them before tightening them so that they are out of your way. After that, I attach the slow motion controls. They're keyed so they fit in only in one way, and then you secure them with the smaller hex screws. My frustration here is that the screws just keep turning, stripping into the plastic, so they never feel fully tight, but they hold well enough for me, and I repeat the same process for the azimuth axis. Looking at the saddle, it's a standard Vixen design with two locking knobs, a main one and a small backup. Like the larger mount, these knobs do scuff up my dovetail plates, which I wish SV Boney would address. Finally, I slide my ATX90 onto the saddle, tighten it down, and the whole setup feels solid and ready. If you use the larger SV225, then the Mini is very similar. They have the same Vixen style saddle and we can see the angle markings on both the altitude and the azimuth as we have seen on the original right here. And they both feature slow motion controls. So the motion controls here and here, one on the altitude, one on the azimuth and has the shafts on both sides so you can decide which direction is easier for you. They both have the 3 8 inch threading on the bottom, so they can mount onto pretty much any tripod. They're both made of aluminum, so they feel really solid and really good. So looking at the differences, the key difference is very noticeable. So it's the size, the weight, and the capacity, or the payload capacity for both of these. The Mini here weighs about one and a half kilograms, once I have it off the mount here, or off the tripod, and this one weighs about three kilograms. The Mini has a payload capacity of about five kilograms, whereas the original has a payload capacity of 10 kilograms, which is massive. On the original, I use my Nexstar 6 SC, six inch SCT on this all the time for outreach events, and this has solidly held the thing every single time I've used it. And the whole payload weighs maybe five to six kilograms at most with everything on there. I mean, eyepieces, diagonals, uh, finder and everything. And I think that the Mini would be able to handle it, but I am not brave enough to take that out for a test run on an, in an actual star party. So I'm going to be using this with smaller telescopes such as my ATX90. I do have another Vixen Moxitov that, that I could use for this as well and smaller refractors. This one will stay for my bigger telescopes, such as my six inch SCT and my Astro 71F, which can get a little bit heavy with all the attachments attached to it. Another key difference that we can see because of their size difference is the portability. So when the SV225 Mini is not attached to a tripod, it's really tiny and it is super lightweight. So if you're traveling somewhere, if you wanna hike somewhere, this is probably the better mount to take, especially if you're using a camera or a small telescope, wherever you're going. This will also fit more easily into luggage if you're flying, whereas this one will also fit. It's also pretty small, but you can see the size differences. It is much, much larger than the Mini. But when it comes to handling, one thing that you'll notice is that they both have like bars here that you can kind of grab onto, but the Mini the bar here is a little too small for my fingers, so I can't actually put my fingers through and grab on. Whereas with the SV225, the original one, I can grab on pretty solidly. So that's one of the reasons why I have this actually on a tripod and this one is loose because I can 
just hold on to it. And when I'm traveling or when I'm moving from one location to another, when I'm doing star parties, this is super handy because I can pick this up with one hand. I can pick this up with one hand too, but you'll see that my grip on this one is wider than this one. So I have this one, it's a little bit stronger. It feels a little bit better to handle than this one. But if you're trying to get something for maybe your kids to handle, then the weight of this and the, you know, their small fingers, this is probably better than mini. And sticking on to handling, one thing that the original has is this little handlebar here. So I can actually, you know, it screws this on and I can move the mount, I can rotate it, I can skew it manually using this mount or using this handlebar. The SE225 Mini does not have one. It doesn't even have a position for one. And I kind of wish it did, even if it was small, because I, when I have to move my telescope more than, you know, using just the final fine adjustment knobs, I have to grab onto the telescope and move the telescope itself. Otherwise, it's really hard to move. So I wish I had had something like this because this handlebar does make things a lot easier. And you also notice when you look at the slow motion controls is that the slow motion controls of the original SV225 is much longer and they're also flexible, which is actually really handy when you're out in the field and you're trying to adjust, make adjustments like this. And you can bend this towards yourself and get access to the knob. These are solid, these are solid plastic. And as you saw in the unboxing and the setup, the how it's locked in with the little screw, with that little hex screw, it's starting to strip the handlebar. And I've had this fall on me multiple times on my walk to and walk back from the corner. It's about a five minute walk because it just like bounces and then releases. So I don't think the tightening screw ever actually tightens, but it still works to works as a slow motion control because of the shape. So yeah, it's a little it's a little bit strange. Uh, I mean, this one has its problems too. You know, it uses the thumb screws that tend to come loose after you turn it a whole bunch of times. But that's well known in not just this, but any kind of system that uses these kinds of locking screws. They will come loose as you use them. Now, talking about the pricing, the SV225 Mini is ninety nine dollars, and this one is one hundred forty nine dollars. I believe the price has increased slightly since. I reviewed it earlier this year. And either way, the price for both of these is excellent, especially when you compare them to competitors like the AstroTech Voyager 2 or the Explore Scientific Twilight 1, which costs a little over $250. Although those two include tripods, is it worth it? For my needs, I actually still prefer the original SV225 for multiple reasons. The slow motion controls are, I think, better. Well, the slow motion control knobs are better for me. I love the handlebar and it has a higher weight capacity that I can use for my SCT. And the one thing I did forget to mention is that both of these scopes claim to be minimal to no backlash as a human person. Uh, there's no way for me to really test it with my hands. If I were to do imaging, if I were to put this up onto like PhD tube, uh, or like an autofocuser that can actually measure the backlash, I'd be able to give you some details. But as for now, right now, I'm just gonna go with whatever they have on their website, that there is no backlash. As a human, I am not able to tell. The, these both work really smoothly, both in both the altitude and the azimuth axis. So I think what I'll probably end up doing is giving this one away to one of the volunteers that work with us. I probably do need to find a tripod because I don't have an extra one. I did have two Skywatcher tripods, but these aren't really the best tripods. So maybe I'll give this to someone who has a tripod they can just mount this onto and it'll be great for star parties. I will still continue to bring this to star parties with me. As I said, I think I've taken this to about seven out of the nine or 10. I've lost count of how many outreach events I've been to this year. And this one got a little test at a small outreach event around the corner and it worked really well. Like I was able to keep the moon centered using the slow motion controls. And of course the angle markers on the altitude and azimuth axis help quite a bit, especially when I'm trying to like figure out where I'm looking and how far I need to go. But I would still personally pay the extra $50 for the larger version than the smaller one. So the one question for you is what's more important to you? Is it size or savings? I'll drop any links and discounts that I get access to in the description below. If you're in the Boston area or more specifically the Cambridge area, we've been doing a ton of outreach activities over the last year and we plan on doing more. So I hope you'll stay in touch. 
find me on Discord, on Blue Sky, on YouTube here, where I'll try and announce those events as early as possible. A lot of those events tend to be impromptu. You know, we just see a clear sky in a couple of days and we'll just head out and then I'll post about it somewhere. If you'd like to support this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or find me on Buy Me A Coffee. Huge thanks to all of my supporters. And if you have any questions, please let me know below. Until next time, there's guys. Thank you.